Today's date is the 12th of June, 2012. It's 8.55 a.m., and I'm on my way to the second audition, second live audition in Austin, Texas. It's been a very interesting lead-up to this audition because I've had a lot more actors and actresses from which to select. Apparently, the casting agents around Texas have gotten a hold of the fact that we're trying to cast for this trailer, and they have been recommending some of their clients to us. And so I'm getting a lot more um, hits in terms of people uh, submitting. Some of the actors and actresses um, I'm turning down just flat out because they don't seem to have the look that I'm after. That's a very subjective thing, but if I if I look at the picture and I say I, I just I don't feel like they fit any of the roles that we have available, then I send them an email back and thank them for their submission and just tell them that you know I just don't have anything available. And they're very understanding. As a matter of fact, I've I've gotten a few responses back saying, "Gee, people don't ever turn us down. We just never hear." Well, of course, my attitude is if they take the time to submit their headshot and their resume, they deserve an answer. Um, and so I've written a ton of those. And I think the number of emails exchanged uh, since the beginning of the project in, in February, beginning of the casting in February, um, has now exceeded uh, 1,500 email exchanges. Now that's not that's not 1,500 people signing up. I mean, that's that's me receiving a submission and answering, in some cases, back and forth, you know, trying to get things settled. If it appears that the actor or the actress is appropriate uh, in terms of their look, age, and, and uh, you know what they look like, um, then I will send back an email that says, could you please forward to me uh, an audio clip or a video clip of your voice because I want to be able to hear what you sound like. And in some cases they will respond right away. In some cases they'll respond uh, a week later. And in some cases they don't respond at all. And my guess is if they don't respond at all, then they're really not interested in, in pursuing the submission. If it takes them a week, um, in some cases I've been very pleased with what they've sent me a week later, but I'm looking at that saying, well, a person that responds immediately is more anxious than a person who takes a week. But I'm not discounting their material. I mean, I'm, I'm considering it whether it comes in the first day or comes in on day seven. It just, I'm making a mental note that, hey, these guys were really anxious or these guys took their time. That's going to have something to do with their willingness to show up on set at the right time and all that. So I do think about it. Some of the submissions that I get, the audio or video submissions that I get, as soon as I see the person or hear them, um, then I, I can tell, okay, they, they, they have the look, but they don't have the sound that I'm after. That also is very subjective, but it's certainly something that I'm using because I want to be able to close my eyes and listen to these characters and, and have a nice experience too. Now, in some cases, uh, once I've seen the audio or the video presentation, then I will say, okay, this person looks right, they sound right, I want to see what they're like in person. And so then I invite them to the live audition. If they get an invitation to a live audition, I find it fascinating too that I don't always get an answer back immediately. In some cases the answers are quick, in some cases it takes a few days, and in some cases I don't get an answer at all. That surprises me too because they've made a couple cuts and they're getting a live audition invitation 
and they don't respond. So I guess what goes through their minds is that they they think, well, gee, I, I don't know if I want to do that, which is okay. It's just that it, it surprises me that they go that far in the process and then they decide not to go any further. In some cases, the response is uh, days later. I think we're seeing somebody today that I think waited five or six days from the invitation to the response. And I'm, I'm glad that this individual is, is going to test. But the disadvantage to waiting that time is that there's not much time in order to learn the lines. So once I make a invitation to a live audition, what I'll do is I'll write back and I'll say, okay, here's some lines, either script material or out of the book, that you need to be prepared to read from with, with paper in hand. And then also I say, here's a section I'd like for you to memorize, the lines of the character. And I'm asking, too, that they uh, come to the audition in wardrobe uh, something similar that would make them feel in character. Last time we did that, and I think the uh, the actors did a great job of showing up in character. I think that helps a lot. It helps me judge what they would look like in that situation, and also makes me. Um, I, may, I think it makes them feel more of the character, and they. I think they do a better job. So that's in my request. That's what I do. Is I ask them to, you know, try to find something in their closet. I tell them don't go out and spend any money. Just look in your closet and see what you've got available. So then the next um, round of emails is I the people that have uh, been invited and have responded that yes they'll arrive. Then I send an email the day before as a reminder saying uh, we have the audition schedule. See you there. And in some cases, I get responses back. In some cases, I don't. And then before I left the office this morning, I checked my email to see if we had any cancellations, and we did not. Last week, or two weeks ago, we had two cancellations. This week, we have none. Now, there's a couple of people who have submitted um, video auditions. This is where they couldn't make the live audition. They were invited. They couldn't make the live audition either out of town or they live some distance away. And so I've said, well, here's some script material. Can you do a live audition or can you do a video audition? And they have. And in a couple of cases, I've been um, pretty impressed I mean, I received, uh, well, two auditions yesterday, video auditions yesterday, uh, that the first one, I was, I, I, I like, I like the way that the lady looked, I liked her Irish accent, and as she got into the role, I, I think she became that character. I mean, she was just really good, I thought, and you know, I just I wrote her back and I said, "You have just set the standard. Um, you have just um, raised the bar, and the people who are also competing for that particular role, they're they're going to have to struggle to meet your standard." Now, I told her that, and there are some others that are um, attempting to get that particular role, but in my mind, I'm going to compare her. Uh, her performance to theirs. They're going to have to be really good to um, step in front of her. And uh, you know what's interesting when we did the um, live audition last time, I could tell pretty much once I saw the person just within a few minutes, I could tell, hey, this, this person is in the lead. They just... Um, they just stole the scene. I mean, they just they stole the audition because they were totally in character and emotional and, and good at what they were doing. I also received an audition from the actress in 
Canada. And this is something that she's been working on for um, a little while, um, getting it all lined up. And I, you know, I could tell in corresponding with her that she really cared about acting and she really cares about this project. And my sense about her has been very good. Well, she sent an audition, which I received last night, and she just absolutely knocked it out of the park. I mean, she was the person. She was the character. And I was extremely impressed at how uh, good she was. And interesting, when she sent me the, uh, the audition, she wrote and said, well, you know, I'm sending it to you. I'm really nervous. I'm stressed out. And I, I can understand that, you know, it was important to her to do a good job uh, from so far away. And yet, when I saw that, when I saw that audition, I thought, "Man, you have nothing to be nervous about. You're absolutely great." And so, you know, I'm. She's the role. She is the role, and um, um, she's been cast for that particular character. So the video auditions that people are sending in are really helpful in terms of making decisions I don't necessarily have to see them in person now there's an advantage in seeing in person because you have uh, feedback back and forth you can ask a person to change this or change that you can direct them and they can um, they can respond to that which you can't do on a video audition but given the um, quality of the actors and the actresses that that we're testing I'm confident that the the individuals that are sending in video auditions I mean they're following instructions in terms of doing the audition so I'm I'm confident that they're going to be able to follow instructions when we're when we're actually making the the trailer so at this point I'm just um, again surprised and pleased that this project is going so well it's absolutely going so well and in a few hours we'll know whether or not we're getting additional characters uh, I think we're gonna be I mean I I would be surprised if we selected nobody from today's auditions I mean they've already met a couple of um, a couple of minimum requirements and um, some of them have exceeded those requirements I mean they look good they they sound good they're very promising I suppose you never know once they get there they could freeze up and and um, not do a good audition although I understand that I mean and that's something last time I would ask people if they're nervous and in some cases they were in some cases they weren't but I could tell that once they got into it their nerves went away and they were they were good I guess that's another advantage of a live audition is you can tell how they handle the nerves so we'll know in a couple hours and um, uh, we will proceed from there. One other thing uh, in the queue today for work is um, uh, my friend in Austin asked me if I would help him shoot a political commercial. And so I wrote a script that he's going to use and a couple of the actors, uh, one actor that we've cast for the Look For Me series is going to help us out. And then we've got another lady who is testing today uh, we've also asked her to help us out and I'm gonna play a part in there I play a, a drug dealer uh, which should be a, a interesting to play a drug dealer and so as soon as we finish the auditions we're gonna pack up the gear and we're gonna go to another location and, and set up I'm gonna shoot some on the street and then some inside a restaurant and this is something that um, my friend needed for a political candidate who is in a runoff and so we'll throw that together and and probably have a good time doing it 
So until next time, keep those cards and letters coming, or whatever it is that people do. Keep keep subscribing to the YouTube and liking and sending it out to your friends. Uh, subscribing to the channel, I shall say. Uh, I'm oh, speaking of that, you know, I just got some videos cranked up on um, YouTube in November of 2011. I've had the channel since 2008, but didn't really do much with it. And then 2011, I started putting videos up, and we're already more than 6,000 views, which may not seem like a lot in the internet world, but it's very encouraging to me that people are liking some of the stuff that they see. Most popular things are the telemarketer payback um, audios that I do. This is where the uh, telemarkers will call me and I'll tape record the conversation and I'll just come up with some baloney just on the spot to keep them on the phone and get them off their game and, and shock and surprise them and so those continue uh, I mean I get these calls all the time so I just keep making them and they're kind of fun it's a, it's a chance to jump into a character and just do some improv and those seem to be getting more hits than anything else. Some of the political stuff I've done has gotten a fair number of hits, but that's tapered off now. That was the presidential candidates. That's tapered off now because um, the public's not interested in those presidential candidates. Go figure. But they are interested in the telemarketer paybacks. So we'll see you later. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening.